Hi, thanks so much for joining us. This is Shannon from SIS for Teachers. We've been talking about in these video series about how to do multiplication of fractions. In our previous video, we talked about how we use our understanding for what we know about multiplication in whole numbers to help us understand how to use it in fractions. So in our previous video, if you haven't um, watched it, you can go to our YouTube channel and where we multiply a whole number times a fraction with manipulatives it would be a really great start. In fourth grade, kids learn a lot about how to do this, and so they kind of take this understanding and bring it to them into fifth grade as they start to multiply a fraction times a fraction. So to review, when we ask you what does five times six means, you know that it means five groups of six. 89 times 12 really means 89 groups of 12. Over here we have the fraction um, manipulatives that you've been using, which is our pattern blocks. We have the hexagon is equal to one whole, our trapezoid is, work, uh, is equal to one half, and then our rhombus is one third, and then our triangle is going to be equal to one sixth. So let's try to look at maybe a fraction times a fraction. We first want to really understand what it's asking us first. So this means half, and we can kind of use just the word of when we're thinking of fractions to make it easier. So what is half of a third? Should I get out my half or should I get out my third? Now most of you might know just to go across the top and be able to show that one times one is one and two times three is six. So you might already know the answer is one six, but we're trying to challenge your brain here today is to say, how can you model it? Some students have literally said, okay, I'm gonna do one half and I'm gonna times it by one third and it's gonna equal one six. That's not what we're talking about when we're looking for you to demonstrate your knowledge on a higher level by showing us concretely to see what your conceptual understanding is. Instead, we wanna see how you're kind of building this. I like to put my one whole kind of down to make sure I remember what I'm talking to in the relationship of what we're talking about with multiplying fractions. So if I said one half of a third, I need to put the third on top and re-say that statement while I'm pointing to the shape that we're talking about. What is one half of one third? Well, if I looked at just this one third and I wanted to divide it in half, I know that I could look at my triangle and that is going to cover half of my third. The reason why we have the hexagon down below is so that you don't get confused that this is worth half, because that's not the case. It's what is this piece in relationship to the whole? Because remember, we're not even talking about whole numbers. We're talking about part of our whole. And so in this case, we can show this model that this equals one sixth. We would want you to show this model to show that you are showing one half of one third with this. What happens if I were to use the commutative property and show this the other way? Does it have the same shapes? Will it look the same to explain it? The answer is no, because we're now talking about one third of half. Okay, so am I going to pull out my half or am I gonna pull out my one third? It's one third of half. So I'm gonna keep my whole so I can see it. I'm gonna show the piece that we're talking about, which is the half. It wants to know what one third of this piece is. I could certainly take my triangles to test out to make sure that three six is equal to one half, which it is indeed. It only wants to know what one third of this piece is. So this would be my model. Looking at this to the whole, this isn't equal just to one third because we're talking about it as it relates to the whole. It's one third of the half though. So when we know that, we can look at this shape and know that the answer is one sixth. When we look at fractions, it's really important for you to conceptualize the understanding of what you're doing. The challenge I have for you to do with you and a partner after watching this video is for you to come up with one or two other fraction statements that you could come up with that would match the pattern blocks here. So with your partner in your class, if you're watching this in a flipped video class, you could have the idea of showing how to do this and get um, the ideas of how you could create more pattern blocks. You can also change the size of your hole if you want to do this by making your hole worth two hexagons, which would then change 
our trapezoid would now be worth one fourth, our um, rhombus would now be worth a sixth, and then our triangle would be worth one twelfth. So can you create a problem or two using the pattern blocks that you have to help follow the sequence that we're with? We hope that you enjoyed our video on how we use multiplication of fractions with the relationship of what we've already learned in multiplication, transferring it into our understanding of a whole number times a fraction and now a fraction times a fraction. This will help you as you start to understand more the why before the how. If you can explain why you can do this, you can go ahead and use it the way that you understand how to do it. But if you don't understand why the answer is 1 6 and you can't prove it with manipulatives, we need you to work more with manipulatives to use this. This video can be used in your classroom to demonstrate demonstrate as a lesson launch as you start to learn about fractions times a fraction. You also can use it in a flipped classroom fashion where students are going to watch the video prior to seeing you in a math with someone station. This will help kids to have a better background knowledge as you start to instruct and you can start your instruction off right here. If they're understanding what's going on here, they should be able to create other fractions times a fractions using the pattern blocks. We hope that you check out our website for more tutorial videos and different kinds of information that you can use in your classroom and also our YouTube channel. Thanks so much for joining us.